Hey guys, how's it going today? This is Captain Energy of Captain Energy Music. Today, we got something pretty cool. It is 909 day, and everybody's doing 909 tutorials and samples and all that kind of thing. Well, I decided to go a little bit different of a direction and uh, talk about something that I thought was pretty cool. All right, so when I first started as a DJ and when I was first starting in music production, one of the things I really wanted to be able to do was make music on the go. Now, this was not really a possibility at the time. I mean, when I worked at the club, I used to bring my desktop, tower desktop in with me with a uh, black and white VGA monitor because I could get a smaller 12 inch CRT uh, and be able to carry that all with me. And I brought it all in on a cart. We set it up at the booth. Um, you could talk to my friend, Charlie, uh, from back at the beach club where we worked um and he used to be like wow i can't believe you bring that in here all the time i mean between that and the crates and crates of records man you djs today don't know how good you have it being able to walk in with just a thumb drive plug it into the turntables and go but uh yeah maybe you do some of you probably do but uh it's i mean it used to be a, an exercise in in exercise just getting to the booth with all that vinyl um, and uh, all the things I used to bring with me. And if, if you wanted to bring a keyboard or two, you know, you would just you would just loading up a van full of equipment to do a night at a club. Um, well, those days are gone, thank goodness. Uh, now we have some great tools out there that you can just uh, go do a night somewhere. I mean, like I said, you can get a thumb drive in most most clubs, plug it into the system, and have all your tracks with you right there. Um, but even so, that still doesn't answer the uh, making music on the go part of my life that I wanted to do back then. Again, using a tower. I mean, notebooks were very pricey in, in the 90s. Uh, you couldn't get a decent notebook. And even so, notebooks in, that were available to do music production, it wasn't like today where everything could be done in the box. You could get a sequencer but you still needed uh, synthesizers to carry with you and a MIDI interface and an audio interface and all the craziness. Um, but now we have things like right here, I have my iPad pro um, and I have on this iPad pro, I've got a few programs on here that I'm going to show you not today all at once, but I'm, I'm going to do you know one right now today. Um, and this particular program changed my life. Uh, in a big way at the time when I got it because I got it first for my iPhone um, and it's a company or it's a it's a product made by a company you all know and love Korg um, this is a product called Korg Gadget it's Gadget 2 it's the most recent uh, edition of Gadget I've been using it since Gadget the original Gadget I guess one that didn't have a number but it was just Gadget um, this this DAW uh, and I, I guess I use the word DAW loosely a little bit because, I mean, when I think of a DAW, I think a fully encompassed workstation, production environment. This isn't that per se, um, but this music production software is pretty amazing. Um, I would say if you don't have Reason on an iPad, at least we can still have uh, this application. That's what I thought at first. Um, now of course there's other applications like, you know, Cubasis, which is just mind blowingly awesome. Um, and there are other applications as well, but Cubasis is my kind of main iPad DAW these days. Um, sometimes you just got to pick where you get the most versatility from. Um, and, uh, using Cubase as my DAW is definitely a cool option. Anyway, this application has got a ton of synthesizers in it. Look at all these. Um, and these are the ones that I own. Uh, I've bought everything you can get for it. You'll even find in here, actually, ironically enough, uh, Propellerheads actually did make a synth for this right here, Stockholm. Um, Stockholm is essentially uh, Dr. Rex, uh, which you will find in Reason, you know, for slicing and, and uh, performing loops on your in your uh, music. All these other synths, though they're named differently, we'll say, like Montpellier, that's the Korg Monopoly. Um, now, these synths are 
slightly cut down versions of their full featured VST brothers or sisters, whatever you want, however you want to look at it. But they do a lot uh, in this little environment. I mean, and it gives me uh, something I can just throw in a backpack. I mean, a lot of times I'll take my, my Korg Nano Key 2, this guy right here, um, with me. and uh, Or I'll take my uh, Akai Mini and just go. And I can write music on these that I can export as audio or export as MIDI and, and bring into other DAWs to finish. But this thing is pretty awesome. It works on any iPad at this point, any modern iPad, I should say. I can't promise you it'll work on, you know, your uh, iPad 2 that you still have hanging around in the closet. <laughs> but uh, but this thing does some amazing stuff. And I just want to give you a little look at it so you can see uh, some of the potential. I mean, it allows you to render your audio and use samples. So, I mean, this thing's pretty much unlimited in what you can do with it. They just had a sale, I think. But it goes on sale all the time. It's, it's awesome. If you have a Nintendo Switch, this is available for the Nintendo Switch. If you don't have an iPad and you want to mess with this, this software, this is available for the Nintendo Switch, believe it or not. It's the only production software that I know of that is really good and available for a console-type device. So, I mean, hey, if you're going to get locked down again in this next round of, uh, you know whatever get yourself a nintendo switch they're they're gonna be they're ramping up production anyway to sell a bunch of them right now from what i understand and get yourself a copy of gadget while you're at it um if you have a mac it's available for the mac so you could get it for your macbook or your mac desktop and if you have a pc you're still not left out because all these synthesizers in their uh gadgetized versions the the exact same way they show up here on gadget are available for purchase and installation in your favorite Windows DAW. So without any issue at all, you can, I mean, what I'm going to show you here, you can pretty much apply to any DAW uh, you want to. You can apply it to Gadget. You could, um, you know, again, use it on a console, your Mac, your iPad. Uh, the only thing they haven't done yet is Android. And I have a feeling, now this is not insider info or anything, but... Um, as of late, I know Cubasis just came out for the Android, and I have to say, the latest version of the Android operating system handles audio a lot nicer than any of the previous versions. So, there's a good possibility, in my mind, that Korg could potentially look at this and go, hey, we're missing this market, and let's bring it out. Because, I mean, they've literally covered every other platform, uh, with the exception of, of course, PlayStation and Xbox, uh, and Linux. I mean, which, you know, you could argue Mac and Linux, whatever, but that's their, their only, what they're missing is that one thing. Anyway, so here we go. I'm just going to take, take you through a little bit here. All right. So this is pretty much your starting screen. I'm going to hit new. So we go to a new project. Um, it picks a name it generates a name for you from a bunch of adjectives and nouns it'll you know put something together for you so a solitary cat that's what it's called this one all right so that's fine we'll use that name for now personally the randomly generated names are nice but i, I can never remember what they are so it's better for me to give it a name uh usually I don't know how you are. That's kind of your call. I'm just kind of, you know, this is just, I'm just going through this. All right. So generally when I start a track, first thing I go for is drums. Um, and this application is not lacking for drum machines. Let me tell you. All right. We got London. We got uh, Bilbao. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It might be a mispronunciation. Of course, we have Stockholm if we want to use uh, looped drum kits. Um Let's see, let's just get on this list to see if there's anything else in it. I think there is something else I'm missing here. Uh, oh, there we go. There's a uh, Recife, I guess. I'm not sure how to say it, if that's appropriate. But And there's a couple other percussion type. Like right here, we have this one here, uh, Tokyo. And Tokyo is like a, a four-pad 
kind of FM analogy type percussion box. It's pretty cool because it's just it's just so different. Um, just for the heck of it, we'll we'll bring that in. All right. So this is Tokyo. When you open it up, if you want to go back, you hit back. But to get you, you just tap your instrument. Okay. Here's Tokyo. Now, <clears throat> if you want this to be full screen, up here we have. Well, let me just go over the interface, I guess first. Uh, up here we have. You can see the instruments that it's playing. It just shows a grid of of when the instruments hit, uh, and and the name of the instrument. Each of them has a a different name. There's the uh, 201, which right here, B bass drum 201, the snare drum 302, the tom 404, and the PCS 503. Now, let's see. I'm going to just double tap this, and what this is going to do is it's going to give us a, a full screen view of this, okay? All right. That's a pretty nice, it's very 303 sounding, I think. Uh, maybe a little more. Uh... All right. You can also tweak these to make sounds that are not uh, kind of typical percussion sounds at all that's not very typical um i mean i could take this and go uh let's make this a, a sawtooth and a little more depth level's fine i suppose i get kind of a that from Pretty neat. Um, and then up here we have the sends. Okay. This determines whether these different effects, the different uh, sounds, are sent through effects. Some instruments have effects built in the actual instrument, but there are also effects on the, the bus. Uh, each channel uh, has its own effects strip type thing, and there are bus effects as well. I'll tap right here. This is the effects that you can choose from right here. If I go throw some tube drive on there. And it gives a little boost. You can hear a little bit of like rasp. Pretty cool. All right. One other thing that's kind of interesting is that they have just this is in version two. You'll notice up here in the upper left hand corner, there's this little box. Okay. You tap that. Now, what this does is something kind of interesting, and it reminds me of um, Reason had released some mobile applications uh, where they did a uh, mobile version of. Um, well, they called the, the application Reason Mobile or something to that effect. Uh, you have to, I'd have to look at it. I can't remember. It's a pretty good app. The only thing missing from it, in my opinion, is the ability to have a few more synthesizers, um, maybe two of each kind, um, and uh, longer tracks, basically. The tracks that you can make with it, and maybe groups of tracks so that you can kind of split them up and to make performances. That thing's pretty cool. It's just missing some things, and they haven't really got back to it. So I kind of wish they would, but we'll see what happens. But what it gives you is it gives you this one finger kind of play. Where you can kind of pick. Pick a spot, try out the different areas. Let's 
just change this drum kit because that whistling sound is kind of getting to me. There we go. Basic. But effective, you know? There you go. Look at that. Nice. I mean, simple, but like I said, effective. All right. There we go. Sorry. To get back, I was thinking of trying to just hide the synth. synth. To get back to your uh, track, just double tap your instrument. That'll get shrink it down so you can again see the, the sequence up here. Okay. I'm just going to draw a few uh, hits in here. And... Um, Let's see. There we go. Pretty basic. All right. Now, kind of want some hi-hats in there. There weren't any hi-hats in that last kit. We could have tweaked the sounds and got one, but instead of doing that, I want to show you more instruments. So we're just going to open up on the drum kit. Let's get London in here, okay? London is your basic sampled drum kit. You look down the bottom here. Um, your uh, you know, controls over each sound are, are kind of limited. You got your sample, but you have your tune and you have time. Now, okay, we can aside from being able to load a kit, and here's the effects again. Like I said in the other uh, application or the other uh, synth. You can choose uh, your your effects from a list that were built in here. Okay, if I just double tap or tap that, I get this grid. Now each instrument, mind you, one thing I can say that's kind of interesting is that they didn't really. I'll say follow a convention when they went from instrument to instrument. Though they're all created by Korg, they do feel somewhat disassociated or detached from each other because they kind of gave every instrument its own kind of way of behaving. Not horrible, just kind of different. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of wish they'd followed more of a you know, this is how you do it on every instrument methodology, but instead they kind of made it feel like here's 40 plugins made by 40 different manufacturers to use in our, our DAW. And, you know, you just kind of have to get the feel for each one. It's, they're awesome. You just kind of got to work with them a little bit to get a feel for them. Um, I do love the application. So now, what you're seeing here is when I hit a sound, okay, whatever sound I hit is changing this grid up here. See, there's one through eight, and there's eight pads down the bottom. If I want to make this weird grindy sound here, which this thing is a, a tom effects, something else, I just go down here and go, okay, I want this to be this. Just go down and pick it off the grid, you know? Yeah, we can mess with this if we want. All right, I'm just going to hit record and we'll throw some of this in here. We'll go... Uh... One thing you might notice, actually, I'm going to change this real quick. One thing you might notice is that we've only got one bar right up here. Well, that's nice. One bar. What are we going to do with that? Well, what you can do, if you tap function right down here in the lower left-hand corner, you'll notice up top that this menu pops up. If 
from here you can add bars. So if I say I want this to be two bars, I can just go, I can hit the plus and, and it'll increase one. Or I can select it from a preset number here, one, and they jump up one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Just like, you know, and you would normally uh, work in dance music type thing, you know? So, all right, so now we've got two bars. So now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change right here the tempo. Okay, this tempo's right down here next to this, this button, which loops. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the metronome and I'm gonna change the tempo to 138. That's about where I like to, that's about where I like to play. Um, all right. So now if we go over here and I hit record. There we go. There's my countdown. Not bad. I'm just going to change. You can you can look at the different bars by tapping them up here. So I'm going to go this one. I just want to get rid of this last. I'm also going to get rid of that metronome because it's going to drive me crazy. One thing we didn't do was getting hi-hats in there, really, which I wanted to do. Let's go back for one second. Go right over here. Now I got 808. Well, let's see here. Yeah, I'd rather have a closed hi hat. Now we're going to want some kind of instrumentation in here, so let's get a bass. Um, you have a lot of choices when it comes to bass. Um, if you wanted to do uh, trap, I'd say go with Lisbon. Um, I recommend messing with these different synthesizers to see which one really kind of suits your style. Um, I have found that I really like this Warsaw one. Um, it kind of reminds me a lot of Serum as far as the, its functionality. It works off wavetables. Um, go right here. Let's get the octave down a little here. That's a little. Let me mention scales here. Um, when you're creating music, if you tap right here on the instruments in the lower left hand corner of this button that says scales, you can choose a scale that you like. Okay. Um, it it defaults to Dorian and C, and it tells uh, that you're in octave position, which octave your first octave is on your keys down here. Uh, your octave range. So you can say, I want to see four octaves, and it will make these buttons little teeny buttons, which will drive you crazy. Um, or you can go just two. Two's good, usually. Um, and you can also pick how many notes, relevant notes, in that scale you want to show on your keyboard. If I want to see all the notes that are relevant to that scale, I hit seven, because there are seven relevant notes. And there they are. Uh, if I want to just see the four most, you know, 
most important four notes in that scale type thing. I did it four. Um, you can choose different types. There's, there's a whole bunch of scales to pick from here. Um, I mean, whatever you pretty much want. I'm just going to leave it alone, and we're just going to go with this. Also, I'm going to bring this up. Double tap. So we can see a little better on the screen. You guys can check it a little easier. Now you can record automation in this just like you would in another DAW. Um, all you gotta do is select what automation you wanna modify and from the scale showing. I'm going to go up here and just add for a good polysynth.
There we go. Now we can go over here. There's an arpeggiator on here too, so you can actually turn this on. Pretty much, I mean, that's pretty much production with this thing. Um, now let's take a look here. You can use select, it's right up here in the left hand corner, sorry, I forgot to mention that, to grab notes and move them around if you want. Down here you'll see this transpose and velocity. You can adjust velocity and transpose down here. Um, you can copy them, and you could paste them in somewhere else if you want to, or you could just delete them if you want to get rid of them. Um, to see down here, these are some of the different uh, controls that you have. So if I go to cutoff, and uh, we throw some... on your iPhone, by the way, just so you know. Um, when you're done, I'm going to stop this for a second. Okay. Now, when you're done, what you can do is, if we just go here and hit tap this little copy button, boom, boom, you know, I can take that whole, whatever I just created there, uh, or whatever the last one is that I am, you know, under, I can copy whatever it is. These can be rearranged any way you want. And then... I can go, let's see here, what we're going to do is, let's get the mixer out and show you that, right, it's right here, um, and I'm moving this over here, sorry, uh, the iPad doesn't have a um, home button, this iPad, so I added the uh, accessibility features to enable one, so I have one, because I just liked having a home button, even though everybody seems to be anti-home button these days. Anyway, so I can go right in here and I can go boom. Okay. I can tell this. Got your mutes, your solos, all this right here. You can use all of these to mix your song, just like you would in a real mixer. If you want to use effects, just hit I insert effects, IFX. Okay. Hit tap right there. And now I pick what type of effect I want to add to this. Um, since right now this is, uh, this is the drum track, the first track, the digital um, analog type drum kit that we that we used. 
Uh, maybe I want to throw just a little compressor on it. Boom. Hit a compressor. If I hit edit, here's all my settings for the compressor. Um, and let's see. Give this a little... with the compressor, that's without the compressor, so we want to compress a little more, and let me mute okay so say I want to take this track these tracks I have and I want to intro with just my drums and then I want to have my drums and my bass and then I want to bring in that last synth okay um, all I got to do is go hit the function key pick what I want to have on and off okay so I'm putting these off and then I can also tell it uh, right here, tap this little 441, and it will say, uh, okay, so the signature is 44. How many times you want to repeat this before I go on to the next bar? So if I go, I want to play this twice, I want to play this one twice, and then I want to play this one four times, okay? Okay, we also have fade in, fade out, uh, so I can actually enable, we'll throw a fade out on this. So at the end in the last track, it'll fade out. And um, right here, we'll go, boom. We'll do a little fade in just for fun. This is just to give you, show you some of the, what's, what's happening here. You can also do scene tempo, which is that uh, you can speed up or slow down your tempo for one, say there's a part where the breakdown drops down from 138 to 90 beats a minute, you know, whatever. I can actually control that right here. Um, this thing is really nice. I really enjoy this this app. Um, anyway, so let's go out and uh, give this a listen. All right, so I'm going to tap function so we get out of here. And now we're at the top, and we're just going to hit play. Sorry. So anyway, once you've got everything set up, you can see it's not playing the uh, bass in here, it's just playing the kick drum and the other parts of the drums. Tap this, what'll happen is with the performance, just like kind of like an Ableton or something, uh, 
it will jump to your next bit um, and play that only when the first part that you chose is done. The first segment is done. You can't it doesn't just jump over. You got you kind of got to know what you want to go to and from. So so now if I go when it's done, going through this one more time. great application and I think you will have a really good time with it um, there is a free version uh, a light version also uh, if you want to mess with it go ahead and download it play with that for a while and see what you think before you spend your money um, but I'm telling you I don't know there are some applications I will never ever delete um, the two that I have right now for music that will never go away are Cubasis 3 and Gadget 2. Those are my two favorite apps on the iPad for music making. Um, anyway, well, I mean, I guess I've rambled long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, rant and uh, dive into what Gadget 2 is and how it works. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you would like to uh, see more videos from me at all, <laughs> click the like button and subscribe so you'll know when they come out. Because I try and release them uh, pretty reasonably within, you know. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I try and release them pretty uh, frequently, or as frequently as I can, and uh, it's really, you know, it'd be really cool if I if I knew who uh, liked the content I'm creating and, um, and what content they want to see more of. Also, uh, you know, don't forget to let me know what you thought of the video in the comments, if you did like this video or didn't like this video, if you'd rather see more Cubase, more Reason, more Gadget. These are all uh, possibilities, and uh, we haven't even touched logic yet. Um, my next set of videos, I'm thinking of doing uh, what I'm going to call a retro remix throwback uh, series. Is I'm going to take a bunch of songs that I wrote uh, 20 plus years ago and uh, redo them because, uh, you know... I was thinking of doing them live and just recording while I produce them and then chopping that video up and, and making that available to you. And maybe if you want to see the whole video, that's cool too. Um, but for it's kind of twofold on that one. One would be that uh, you get to watch me do some video production or some music production, sorry, some music production stuff and just uh, watch and learn, uh, see what you can pick up from it. Um, if I do it live, you could actually ask questions. Um, and uh, the other thing would be that uh, these songs that I'm talking about, I no longer have the master tracks for. <laughs> I mean, all I have is the CDs that they were created on. The master tracks were done in Cubase uh, VST. So we're talking 1996. 1997 um, maybe 1998 they're old um, and uh, I really liked these songs I still do um, unfortunately I don't have the source material anymore it's not usable um, and the vocals I don't even know where they went to be honest uh, they could be anywhere on, on a hard drive somewhere around here but um, I'm going to have to re-record vocals. I might even be looking for a, a vocalist if anyone uh, wants to volunteer. Um, the uh, I'll, I'll probably need one of each, a female and a male vocalist. So if anybody's interested in, in uh, collabing on that, let me know. I would um, love to hear what you've done and, and maybe see if we can get, get some uh, get-together on this. 
but uh yeah the second reason would be one would be to show you guys what i'm doing two would be because i really want to have these songs re-released uh as um new tracks basically more modern versions of what they were i mean they were some of them were beautiful songs that just kind of went to the wayside because uh, i try you know i sold copies of them back in the day but i would love to have kind of a you know i won't call it a best of uh captain energy cd or whatever but uh but kind of like a retro throwback captain energy cd where it's like hey back when i made these songs you know some people will remember them other people won't um anyway well that's it for now i guess i will stop talking uh, don't forget, hit me up, let me know what you thought, like the video, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. So go have some fun, make some music, download yourself a copy of a gadget on your iPhone or iPad, and just get into this application. I think you're really going to love this thing. It's so much fun. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>